meaningful metrics on Off The Ball. In partnership with Whoop, a personalised digital fitness and health coach that helps you unlock your inner potential. See whoop.com for more. It is that time of the week. You're very welcome along. It's Meaningful Metrics on OTB Sports in partnership with Whoop, the personalised digital fitness and health coach that helps you unlock your inner potential. See whoop.com for more. So last week, I went through the meaningful metrics that led you to the winner of the Masters. We shall find out just how meaningful they were over the next four days. By Saturday evening, we will know just how meaningful John Duggan's metrics are because he is going to lead us towards the winner of the Aintree Grand National. Good evening, John. Nathan, Whoa. how are you? Whoa, he's got the hat on. He's been working hard. I, I've been doing more number crunching, Nathan, than Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> and uh, I've been so long since I've been to a race meeting socially that I'm just wearing the hat and I'm just waiting to go somewhere. I can't obviously go to Aintree because I'm, I'm in the hot seat on Saturday, but uh, I'm looking forward to Punches Town and putting some money under that hat. Where does the um, wearing of clothes to match the sporting event start and end? Uh, well, I wouldn't change my shoes. <laughs> so I wouldn't be going around golf tournaments with golf shoes. I, 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 whenever I see anybody like that, I just I, I, I just go into an, a, a blind rage for some reason. I've done that. You protect your shoes. It can get mucky out on the golf course. It's wet. You don't want your shoes to get destroyed. No, uh, I can't have that. Um, it's a good question. Uh, wearing a Tottenham jersey doesn't really suit a guy who's 43 years of age anymore. That's true. Um, so, I, yeah, it, it mainly just a hat for racing and okay. nothing really else. So, uh, the aim of this slot is to look a little bit deeper into the metrics behind sport. And you are going to look at the Entry Grand National and what goes into a horse that can win an Aintree Grand National, the toughest steeplechase of all. So where do you want to start with your metrics? Uh, I've got eight of them, Nathan, and I'm going to start with age. So the Grand National was first run in 1839 in Liverpool. They changed the race conditions in 2013. They brought the race back two furlongs in distance, so four miles four to four miles two. Um, they made the fences easier. What that's done is brought younger horses into play. So in the last six runnings of the Grand National, they've all gone to eight and nine-year-olds. And four of the last of uh, six runnings have been won by eight-year-olds. So the eight-year-olds in the field on Saturday in the field of 40 are Easy's Land, Run Wild Fred, Mount Ida, Longhouse Poet, Fiddler on the Roof, Iscaria 10, Enjoy Dallin, Eclair Surf, and Fortescue. Only nine horses are aged eight. In terms of seven-year-olds, hasn't been a winner of the Grand National at the age of seven since 1940. Bog scar, so I think that's a negative for Coco Beach and Noble Yates. There hasn't been a 12 year old win in 18 years, that's a negative for Annabelle Fly. And Sergeant Murphy back in 1923, 99 years ago, was the last 13 year old to win it. So Black Line, you'd have to think his chance uh, is already gone. So eight and nine year olds, I think, Nathan, you want to be concentrating on generally eight to 10, but you got to rule out the seven year olds are too young and also the 11 and 12 year olds. I think might struggle on Saturday. So age is your first metric. What's next? Jumping. This is jumps racing, right? So when I go through a card, when I'm doing my study for a race meeting, Nathan, I'm always trying to discount horses when I see the words like mistake, uh, not fluent. This is the Grand National. They're going uh, quite a good gallop. It's four miles and a quarter. You want to be able to jump. A, a lot of the horses in the Grand National tend to win from, especially in the second circuit, the front rank. It's a hard race to find ground and make ground and if you if you're starting to make mistakes and you're out the back you don't have a chance of winning this so snow leopard s who could go off favors fitting to become the first mare to win this since 1951 and she's going to be popular because she's a gray as well and she's also a mum she actually had a fold there a couple of years ago she's a brilliant jumper she's won over the fences she won the beach chase in december burrow saint is a great jumper won the irish national before minetta times last year's winner jumped well to win the race last year but the negatives, Brahma Bull, not a good jumper. Mount Ida jumps to the right. Uh, this is a left-handed track. Issues around two for goals jumping, Augusta goals jumping, Phoenix Way, Poker Party, Top Field Ben fell over the fences with the last time he ran over them. So these are horses, the questions to answer over their jumping. You've got to be able to jump to win. If we were having this conversation 10 years ago, would jumping be even more important? You mentioned how they've changed the fences. Uh, there's obviously safety concerns. Is it an easier race? to win now it's an easier race to win uh, and that's why it brings younger horses into play and horses with a bit more speed but if you still make mistakes 
like for example, Tiger Roll would not have won an old fashioned Grand National, not a hope. But he was nimble on, over his fences. But Tiger Roll won a big two mile race at Cheltenham when he was a four year old, so he had the speed to lay up with the with the other horses. So it's not as pronounced as it was, but horses that make mistakes are not going to be able to make up the ground and be able to travel as well as other horses. That's why you got to rule out, I think, some of the ones I mentioned there. The Grand National is a handicap, so I presume weight is one of your metrics? Yeah, hugely. And I think weight, once again, has changed because the race has changed. So between 1983 and 2005, uh, no horse carried more than 11 stone to win. So you'd often horses like Gold Cup winners would be in there with 12 stone, wouldn't have a chance of winning. You generally need to just wipe out anything over 11 stone. But things have changed. So uh, the, the handicap, as it were, which is meant to, in theory, give every horse an equal chance, has been compressed. So Fortescue now is the bottom weight off 10 stone 6 on Saturday. Many Clouds is the only horse to carry more than 11 stone 6 to win in the last decade. I think that's a challenge for Manetta Times. He's carrying 15 pounds more than last year. Any second now is carrying seven pounds more. If you say that 11 stone six is the cutoff point, I think it makes it difficult for me at the times. Any second now, Delta Work, these are all fancied horses. Run Wild Fred and Easy's Land. And six of the last eight winners, Nathan, have carried less than 11 stone. On that basis, you could run out the top 15 horses in the handicap, leaving yourself with 25 horses. But I do feel the class is more important these days in the Grand National because I think the weights have been compressed. And that brings me to the key trials. So, key trials, your next metric. What are the key trials? Um, well, the previous year's race uh, is, is an important trial. Like, any second now was very unlucky in the race last year. He was hampered, and he finished third behind men at a time. So, he know we know he can jump over the fences. Delta Work won the cross-country chase at Cheltenham there last month. That's the race Tiger Roll won before going on to win the Grand National. If heavy ground hasn't left a mark, D Delta Work being revitalized by the, the new fences uh, over the cross-country chase, which was similar to Aintree, I think it could de definitely be taking the same route that Tiger Road took. Um, the Irish Grand National has been a key trial last year. Freewheel and Dillon won it, remember, at 150 to 1 from Run Wild Fred and then Joyd Allen. The Ladbrokes Trophy at Newbury, formerly the Hennessy, has also been a top trial in past years. Derasher Counter is a past winner. Fiddler on the Roof was a close finishing second in this uh, last December. Longhouse Poet won the Thiestas Chase at Goran Park. In the past, Hedge Hunter, number six Valverde, have won that race before winning the Grand National. Snow Leopard S, as I said, won the Beecher Chase over the fences in December. And Declare Surf won the Classic Chase at Warwick, got into the race late on today because of a couple of absentees, and was second in the long distance race in Newcastle last time out behind Win My Wings, who won the Scottish National very easily last week. So there are a lot of the key trials I think you need to be looking at. So Ireland have a cracking record in this race I think it's the last three in a row have been have gone to Irish trainers how important is nationality well I think it just is reflective Nathan of the fact that Irish horses are generally dominant now in national hunt at the moment we're, we're on the right end of the cycle 18 winners at Cheltenham like between 1975 and 1999 at the entry Grand National there was no Irish winner between Lascargo and Bobby Joe I'm going through last year the first five Irish trained 10 of the first 11 Irish trained half the runners this week are Irish trained. So you can theoretically, once again, if you think Irish horses are better at the moment, rule out 20 of the runners that are UK or Scottish trained, or English or Scottish trained. So from a nationality point of view, if you think we have the aces, you're just wiping out 20 of the runners and you might want to change the sweep that you've got. Uh, stamina must be a key metric. Absolutely, I think it's the most important one. We've got Richard Dunwoody on the show on Saturday night and I think um, when I spoke to him today, he. He was talking a lot about stamina. You got to stay. Like Burrow Saint won an Irish Grand National. You think he'll stay the national trip over another half a mile? He was cruising last year. Didn't get home in my view. Discorama doesn't stay in my view. Um, the Rasher Counter won that Ladbrokes Trophy, but he was pulled up in a Midlands National. Millella Times does stay, but he's out of form. Mighty Thunder won the Scottish Grand National last year, but he's once again out of form this year. Has had breathing issues. Iscaria Ten was pulled up in an Irish National last year. Class Conti has never won over three miles and neither has Filler on the Roof, who is a horse that is well fancied and he's got to prove it. He did finish well in the Ladbrokes Trophy, but you've got to stay. Freewheel and Dylan, Run Wild Fred, um, enjoyed Allen. You'd have to say that these horses are more likely to stay. Longhouse Poet won the Thiestas. You've got to generally look to horses that have won over three miles, Nathan. I'm not sure if Aintree quite has the sub-air system that Augusta National has, <laughs> uh, but they can water the course. Uh, the going will play a key role as well I assume yeah it's going to be more I'd say on the side of good than soft I've been watching the racing today and look they can water the course as much as they want but there's high winds uh, forecast for Friday and Saturday Nathan 
Uh, we're looking at ground that's perfect. I don't think there's many exclusive excuses, but there's always horses that like uh, a bog, like a, a muddy field, and there's horses like top of the ground. You're lo more looking for horses, I think, that like better ground or spring ground. There's two of them there in my mind. Freewheel and Dylan is one of them. Um, if you don't think his Irish Grand National win last year was a flash in the pan, he w might like the conditions. He's a front runner. I think that's suited to Aintree. And Kildee Sars is another one who likes top of the ground and has won a handicap chase in a big field at Aintree on the power course there before. Death Duty, Coco Beach, Fortescue are horses that come to mind to me, Nathan, that like deeper ground, softer ground, Lord of Manil as well. And those horses, I'll be putting a line through them. Well, I was with Free Wheel and Dylan's trainer, Dermot McLaughlin, on Monday night, and he said the horse does like the sun on its back. So it's a springtime horse, and I don't think you'll quite get 150 to 1 this time, unfortunately, no. uh, for Free, Free Wheel and Dylan. So that's seven of the metrics. You said you had eight. What's the final Yeah, the one? last one is form. Um, <laughs> it's the most obvious one. I think I actually left it out, and I finally put it in. Um, when I'm looking at horses finishing the first four in a chase last time out, Nathan, only 19 of the 40 have. And how many horses have won their last chase? Only five of the 40. Delta Work, Any Second Now, Longhouse Poet, Snow Leopardess, and Fortescue. Now, Manetta Times, as I said, has been out of form this season. Cloth Cap, who was the favourite for the race last year, has shown no form this season. I'd argue that Santini and Sam Crow have regressed. On his best form, Santini would be right there, but I can't see him showing his best form. I hope I'm not wrong. So I'm looking for horses that generally have been running well in good trials. Um, like, when I'm coming around to this, I'm looking for an Irish-trained horse, an eight- or nine-year-old, no issues with jumping, can handle the ground more on the good side than the soft side, on a reasonable weight that won't kill him in the last mile or, or when they get to the elbow and he'll be run down. A horse that's in form and a horse that's performed in one of the key trials. They're the kind of things we will be looking at when you're narrowing down 40 to win four or five because it's hard to pick one. So who is it, John? Longhouse Poet. Okay. Uh, trained by Martin Brassel. And Martin Brassel trained number six Valverde to win the 2006 Grand National with Slippers Madden uh, in the saddle that time. Horse had won an Irish Grand National previously and uh, beat Hedgehunter and Clan Royal that year in 2006. Longhouse Poet has got a touch of class. He beat Monkfish in a bumper at Punchestown. He won the Thiestas Chase. He travelled well to win that race in uh, earlier this year. He's tuned up for this over hurdles. So what is he? He's an Irish-trained horse. He's aged eight. No issues with his jumping. He can handle the ground because he won that bumper on good to yielding ground. He's on a reasonable weight. I think 11 stone four is fair enough. He is in form and he's performed in one of the key trials. So Longhouse Poet is the one I think that might have the class to win. If you're looking at the metrics, that horse is definitely on the shortest. Enjoy Dallin, Kieran Murphy. Be a great story for him. Horse now owned by J.B. McManus. Once again, He's eight years of age. He's got 10 stone 11, so he's under 11 stone. He was third in the Irish Grand National last year. He ran, ran well in the Paddy Power Chase at Christmas at Leopardstown. Connor Orr will ride him. He's definitely got a chance of fitting the metrics. Eclair Surf, once again, an eight-year-old, um, won a key trial. The Classic Chase was second over four miles last time. Can throw in a tricky jump. That's the only worry you'd have. But has only got 10 stone six, I believe, in the race on Saturday. So Eclair Surf, once again, fits a lot of the trends. Uh, any second now, if, if you believe that weight's not that much of an issue, any second now and Delta Work have to come into the frame on the fact that they're seen as class horses that both have the stamina and maybe the ability to be better than the than these, you know. John Duggan, thank you very much. All right. No that, problem, Nathan. That is this week's Meaningful Metrics on OTB Sports in partnership with Whoop, the personalised digital fitness and health coach that helps you unlock your inner potential. See whoop.com for more. Meaningful Metrics on Off The Ball. In partnership with Whoop, the personalised digital fitness and health coach that helps you unlock your inner potential. See whoop.com for more.